Hello everyone and welcome back to Hyperlysium. This video was provided by Saman Hosseini and I'm Shadi Ayati, the narrator. So in this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to model a rectangular moving shape load on the UIC 60 train rails. In this process, I'm going to use deload subroutine. Well, in the past session slides, you have seen that we have the dimensions of the profiles. In this process, I'm going to stimulate a moving load with the shape of a rectangle, which has the length and width of 20 mm and 15 mm respectively. The two parts of the rail that are being used are attached to each other with thermite welding. So, first and foremost, I want to explain every piece of the simulations in Abacus. These pieces were designed in SOLIDWORKS software before the session and they were entered in Abacus with STP format. So, this is the model of thermite welding and this is the model of the two rails that are being used. All the dimensions were defined in the software, as I told you earlier. The profile for these two are shown in PowerPoint. Then, I have to engage with the material properties. As you can see, I can enter the stainless steel that is needed for railways in railway industry uh, with a density of about 8.7 E-9. And then I can enter the Young module and poisons ratio of this stainless steel, about 900 A. Afterwards, I can enter the plastic properties of the rail. So, the difference between the thermite welding and the railway rails is in their material properties. You can see them here, the Young module for thermite welding and this is the thermite welding plastic properties. The thickness of about 50 mm is defined for a thermite welding here. And we already assigned the material properties. So now I can move uh, to the assembly module. Here in the assembly module, you can see the two rails and the thermite welding between them. The point that is very important here in the assembly module is where to put the coordinate axis. Because when we want to write the deload subroutine, we should consider the original axis coordinates to write the codes. So now I can enter the step module and here I considered the dynamic explicit step module that has the time period of 0.11 and I will explain the reason for this later. These are initial and minimum increment size and if the problem was not sold and you had some problems with this increment size, you can reduce it afterwards to solve the problem. Okay, so now I can explain why I chose this time period. The time period depends on the speed of the wheel moving on the rail and we're going to see the speed later. After that you can see that we will achieve the same number for time step. Alright, so in interaction module, the chosen parameter for the surface between the thermite welding and the rail is tight and it can be used for welding too. Now, what concerns me most is the point of uh, choosing the master and the slave. When the mesh for some part is smaller than the other, that part is the slave, and the other part but larger mesh is the master. For more information, you could watch our YouTube video linked in the description. For example, you see here that the thermite welding has been chosen for a slave from both sides due to its smaller mesh size. The other important part is that I allocated these reference points because here I did not stimulate soil, slippers and traverses among all of them. So I put these reference points and damper spring pin on them. Regarding this matter, you can see these three parts and I have put slippers that you can see it and I use the MPC for them. The next point that I'm going to mention here is the coefficient of spring stiffness, which is defined about uh, 260,000 and the unit for coefficient of spring stiffness is Newton per millimeter. 
The damping coefficient is also defined as 181 and its unit is Newton times second pair millimeters. Well, you can see that everything is entered for these parameters like this. Now we can enter the load module. Here, first I constrain the lower part of the whale to X and Z, except Y axis, because in this case, the dampener and the spring control it, and the force is pushed through the Y axis. As you can see here, all the points that are attached to the ground are limited in every degree. As you can see, for loading, the format is defined with pressure. It is also defined as user-defined, and this is why and where we have to use deload subroutine. Well, here, the gravity parameter has been defined, which is 9800, and there is no other point in load module. So, let's start the mesh module. Here you can see the elements with C3D8R has been used for every three pieces and the mesh size of 6.5 was used for mesh and for the thermite welding the component was mesh with an approximate size of 4. Before moving to job module I want to present the subroutine that I've written for you. If you pay attention here, you can see that the deload subroutine and chords are 1, 2, 3, which I use them for X, Y, Z directions. In this way, I don't have to write the chords 1, 2, 3 every time. I can just use X, Y, Z. And you can see that the velocity is defined with something like 12,000 millimeters per second, which comes to about 43.2 kilometers per hour in the Z axis. This is the loading, which is the function of time and velocity, and B is the length of loading. Here you can see the loading is from A, and as time passes, it increases. Please note that it is also in zero at zero seconds. So the initial point and the end of the loading in Z axis is defined by A and B. Here we have the command for X axis. That shows the width of loading is 20 millimeters. Loading starts from 1 millimeter to 21 millimeter parallel to X axis, which is right here. In the end, the magnitude of the load is 326.6 MPa. Okay, here is the code, so let us see the result. This is my model and due to its time consuming process, I just stimulated to about 11th frame and time, which comes to about 0.06, which is the half of the time. And then you could do this running for the other parts too. I ran this part for you to see and study the results. As you can see, this is the movement of rectangular loading and it passes above the thermite welding. Here we can study the different parameters like tension. I used dynamite implicit which is defined uh, in abacus solver to stimulate the non-linear and dynamic loading. We can have different plots for our stimulation. For example, I show you the misses stress for one of the parameters randomly. Here you can see that before uh, the loading and before the wheel arrives, tension exists in some extent. But after the wheel arrives on the piece, we can see a huge increase in tension. And then after that, there is a reduction. To have smoother and more precise plots, we have to register more numbers of increments in field output. Thank you for your attention, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and please, if there are any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us via our email at Hyperlysium. Thank you and good luck!
This video was made by Salman Hosseini. To find his contact information and his updated resume, please visit our website, hyperlyceum.com. Salman is an expert in Abacus, Threematics, Mimics, SolidWorks, Ketia, and a few other engineering software. To plan online sessions and discuss industrial and academic projects, please use the provided email under Salman's contacts. The cost of the projects vary depending on the complexity of the work and can be discussed in advance. We look forward to working with you.